South Africa is lobbying for the extension of its membership of the African Growth Opportunity Act that is expected to expire in 2025. Now, the relationship between South Africa and the USA in relation to the Lady R vessel caused fears of South Africa being expelled from AGOA. Now, however, with the economic situation South Africa faces, economic analysts say it cannot afford such a move. Meanwhile, the U.S. Congress is set to announce the date for the decision on renewal. Now, to make sense of all these international relations and diplomacy expert, Dr. Gideon Chitanga joins us to discuss this. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. It's good to have you at this time. All right, now, if you can hear me, Dr., just to... Okay, all right, uh, we actually lost Dr. Chitanga there. Uh, hopefully, we'll reconnect with him later. All right, so we have him back. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Chitanga. Hello, can you hear me? Thank you. All right, uh, 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 thank you so much. Now, uh, just to give context to our viewers. Yes, uh, can you come what again? Is, what is the concept of AGOA, that's the African Growth and Opportunity Act, and also its significance for South Africa's trade relationship with the United States? And what specific benefits does South Africa gain from its membership in the AGOA? How does it impact its export industries? Uh, thank you for inviting me. So AGOA was passed in 2000. It is a, and it was adopted by the US Congress in 2000 as a framework to facilitate trade uh, between South Africa and uh, sub-Saharan African countries in the US. It provides uh, free market access into the US for various uh, commodities or various types of goods, specifically about uh, 1,800 specific commodities and uh, more than uh, 5,000 general types of uh, commodities that are determined by or allowed by US law to be traded with South Africa and with other uh, sub-Saharan uh, African countries. It is as a framework, it has facilitated growing trade, obviously, to ranging between, um, I think, 14 billion US dollars, thereabout, specifically with South Africa and different um, levels of trade with other African countries. It also provides a, a, a conditionality framework based on a, a creation of free market economies, um, a rule of law and a democracy, a, a, the ability of the targeted markets to protect a US uh, free market access into these economies and combating such things as, uh, as corruption. So as, as a framework, I think it provides for the protection and the advancement of U.S. interests into African markets, sub-Saharan African markets, and surely allowing market access to selected countries. Continentally, I think there are about 36 countries that are participating under AGOA in terms of relations with the U.S., Okay, now in addition to what you have actually just said, Doctor, how do you foresee a GOA membership affecting South Africa's overall economic growth, employment, and also the investment opportunities? I think that to, to locate this discussion in, in contemporary debates, the, the, there are two ways of looking at it. Obviously, South Africa and other participating countries are quite interested in maintaining this relationship. It provides for significant economic relations between the U.S. and uh, and uh, sub-Saharan African uh, sub-Saharan uh, African countries. But on the other way, uh, since 2000, a lot has changed in terms of uh, uh, multilateral relations, geopolitical issues, and concerns from the African side are uh, how this market uh, access to the U.S. has been traded or given as a trade off against. Uh, what they see is a hegemonic political interest from the US and particularly <coughs> the idea of applying coercive means to police African countries to adopt certain 
e geopolitical positions or certain police positions which may not resonate with the domestic constituencies. There is also a sense in which the thinking e within the U.S. about Agoa and uh, the broader U.S. Uh, foreign policy in terms of relations with Africa is changing. E President Biden is emphasizes, emphasized the need to locate Africa as a major trading partner. E but this is inspired by the growing E, e relations between Africa, economic and political relations between Africa and China, e, which is uh, obviously testified by the participation of China and uh, South Africa and uh, recently other African countries in the BRICS, um, the growing influence of uh, the FOCAC is a framework under which African countries engage with China, the participation of South Africa in the BRI, with China and the growth of trade between China and South Africa and China uh, uh, and Africa and China and South Africa, their trade now is clogged is slightly more than 20 billion going either way. And if you look at US trade, it's uh, slightly behind at about 14 billion. And uh, I think that for African countries, they have emphasized the need for a nanny alignment in terms of relating to big powers. The U.S. has been struggling to reposition itself in terms of its relations with Africa, basically catching, um, trying to catch uh, um, uh, up with the blossoming relations that has evolved since 2000 between China and, uh, and Africa, and which relations have redefined the values of engagement away from the traditional uh, emphasis that uh, the U.S. is putting on issues of uh, governance and politics and uh, human rights and uh, a rule of law, what we, we basically call conditionality. Mm -hmm. And the other factor okay. being that uh, the All aggressive right, way of political interference is also I would actually love to hear uh, your opinion, you know, on this. Uh, in your opinion, are there any potential risks or even uncertainties associated with a GOA membership for South Africa? And how might changes in U.S. trade policies or even international trade dynamics impact this relationship? Definitely, e, e, there are there are risks because e, what we witnessed in the past few months were were serious differences in terms of uh, uh, what these uh, relations mean for South Africa and the U.S. E, we we have had uh, e, a, a section of Congress calling for the suspension of South Africa from Agua, e also calling for the impos for impositions of sanctions on South Africa by the US. E e from South Africa, we understand that this at South Africa and Africa, this, e it's, this is viewed as quite punitive, as unnecessary, as a failure to understand the, ge the complex changing geopolitical context. I think the major risk is basically that um, some key politicians or some key functionaries, political and economic functionaries in the U.S. see uh, the role of African countries and South Africa uh, uh, specifically in a totally different way from how uh, South Africa and quite a number of African countries see their role and place uh, in the broader uh, geopolitical scene in terms of relating with other countries. South Africa and African countries would want or prefer to maintain all right sadly we have to wrap up at this time but thank you so much dr chitanga for your insight on this